Good morning, JupyterCon. Uh, my name's Simon Wilson, and I am the creator of an open source tool called Datasat. And today I'm going to be showing you how you can use Datasat in conjunction with Jupyter Notebooks to um, take data that you may have collected from all sorts of different sources and turn it into a SQLite database that you can then browse and use for visualizations and even publish online for other people to see. So I've been working on Dataset for about three years now, and um, the idea is to build an open source multi-tool for exploring and publishing data. Um, and rather than talk more about what that means, I'm gonna drive straight into a demo. Um, this is a Dataset instance that I've been running for about six months now um, with COVID-19 case data. So um, Johns Hopkins University, the New York Times, the LA Times are all publishing extremely high quality data online about the spread of the pandemic. And this takes the form of CSV files that they're sharing in GitHub repositories. So what I've set up is a dataset instance which constantly pulls that data from those CSV files in, converts them into a SQLite database file, and publishes that online for people to look at. So let's take a look at the New York Times County's data. Um, and as I said, this is um, starts life as a CSV file um, in the in a GitHub repository that the New York Times are running here. Um, I pull it in and I turn it into a database table. So this is a relatively unexciting database table where each row represents a date, a county in the US, and the number of cases, a number of deaths that they've seen there. But because this is now a database, there's stuff that we can do with it. Um, dataset uses faceting, which is a little bit like maybe pivot tables in Excel. So here we're faceting by state and county, which means I can see that of these 600,000 rows, there are 18,000 in Tennessee, there are 22,000 in Kentucky. I'm going to click through and look at the rows in California. So now we've cut that down to just per day rows for the state of California that are telling us what's going on. And within the state of California, I'm going to drill down into San Francisco County. So I'll click on San Francisco County. Now I'm seeing 248 rows and because these are sorted by date, you can see there's one per day, this is now showing me the number of cases and number of deaths in San Francisco County over time. Um, data set supports plugins, so I can click show charting options, and I can say, you know what, I want to plot the date against the number of cases as a bar chart. This is using a plugin called Dataset Vega, and now I can see that growth over time visualized in front of me. So the other useful thing about having this stuff in Dataset Online is the Dataset has export options. I can click this JSON link and get back all of that data as JSON, which you can ingest into a notebook very easily. I can click on CSV and get back the data as CSV. There's an option down in the advanced settings down here, which will give me back um, the entire file with all of the rows from that table. So it'll give me a CSV file with potentially up to 600,000 rows if I'd filtered to the top level. So the idea behind Dataset really is that if you have data, this is meant to be the perfect, the, the best possible way of publishing it online. Because once you've got it up online with Dataset, people can explore it, filter it, and visualize it. They can export it back out again. And they can even run their own SQL queries. When you click the View and Edit SQL link here, Dataset will show you the underlying SQL query that was used to render this page and let you edit it. So I'm going to say, you know what, I don't care about that. I just want the county and the cases and the deaths. Um, and I'm gonna keep it filtered where county is San Francisco and state is California. And if I hit run SQL here, it gives me back just that subset. And um, the trick here, normally allowing users to run SQL against your web application is considered a massive security hole. With Dataset, it's a feature because um, the data is all read only. People can't update that data in place. And this is designed for publishing data sets. So the fact that people can query anything within the database is again a feature. It's what acting as, as it's meant to behave. But the obvious question is, okay, so how do you turn things into SQLite databases? How do you take data and turn it into a format that Dataset can then work with? Um, and that's where Jupyter Notebooks come in. Um, I'm going to talk you through how I create a, um, a SQLite database using live data in this demo. And um, this is the USGS uh, earthquake data. They have a feed of all of the earthquakes from a given week. And actually, I can... If I print URL, I think I get a link that I can click on. So I can show you what this looks like. This is a GeoJSON feed 
of earthquakes that have taken place around the world in the past week. And we're going to turn this into something that we can start using with data set. And this is why I get to introduce another open source library I've been working on called SQLite Utils. This is a set of Python utility functions and classes for easily building SQLite databases. And I designed this tool very much to work inside a Jupyter notebook. So I'm going to, but the, the thing that SQLite Utils needs is a list of straight JSON objects that it can then turn into rows in a database. And um, this GeoJSON file here isn't quite a list of regular objects. Let's, um, let's pull it in and see what it looks like. So I'm, I'm going to use the HTTPX library. I'm going to do this here. And then when I open data, we can see that it's a sort of nested um, structure. This is GeoJSON. So we have features, and features have types and properties. And then they've got this thing called a geometry that has coordinates in it. Now, I want to turn this into something um, a little bit more flat. I want just a list of um, JSON objects. So I'm going to do that by writing a function called feature that takes one of these feature nested things and I'm going to say um, d equals f um, properties. I'm going to um, copy across the latitude and the longitude. So d latitude equals f geometry, um, I think it's geometry coordinates. Uh, one, um, the longitude is coordinates naught. I want the ID, which I'll copy directly across here, and then I'll return D. And so let's check that out. If I do feature brackets um, data features naught, here we go. This right here is a nice flat looking dictionary describing a particular earthquake. So then the way SQLite Utils works is you create a database, um, a SQLite Utils database. I'm just going to call it temp slash earthquakes .db, and this will create a SQLite database file. I'm going to create a table in it by referencing that table, and then I'm going to say I want to insert all of these earthquakes here. So what I'll actually do is I'll do feature brackets f for f in data features. And I want a primary key on this table, so I'm going to say the primary key should be ID. And, oh, it doesn't like that because general expressions must be parenthesized. So doing this should do the job. There we go. This has created me a database table. So now I've got that. Um, I've got this file temp slash earthquakes. I can open it up in data set. So I'm going to do data set temp slash earthquakes dot DB. This starts up a little local web server. And... Here it is, here's my database of earthquakes. Um, you can see there are 3,300 rows, but already we can start doing useful things like, um, let's look for everything where the magnitude, um, magnitude is greater than 2.2. Um, and that sh cuts it down to 688. But there's something interesting about this table. It's got a latitude and longitude column. I mentioned data set plugins earlier. I wrote a plugin called dataset cluster map, which I can install by running dataset install dataset cluster map. And what this does is it looks for latitude and longitude columns, and if it finds them, it draws everything on a map. So now when I refresh this page, I've got a map. This is a map of every earthquake in the last week of a magnitude greater than 2.2. Um, I can click on these markers, I can zoom in, I can see little clusters of them around here. Oh, there was quite a, there were 302? over here well that's that's certainly very interesting westmoreland sounds like it might be in a bit of trouble um well, i can also facet by things so data set suggests facets for columns that it knows have a small number of unique values so i faceted but there was a mine collapse the things that you learn digging around in data this is um a mine collapse in bolivar pennsylvania which showed up in the usgs um data um, I'm going to do one more thing to this uh, data here. I'd like to be able to search it. And looking along these columns, there's a thing called place that looks like it would be useful to be able to search by. So I'm going to switch back to here, and I'm going to say dbquakes dot enable FTS for enable full, te full text search. I'm going to do that against the place column. And I run that. And now if I hit refresh in this, 
because I've enabled SQLite full text search, dataset detects that and shows me this search box. And so now if I search for, was it West Westmoreland? I now get back all of those, there were 1,137 detected earthquakes in Westmoreland in the past week. That is, that is a very interesting thing that we've just learned about the world. So that was a whistle-stop tour of um, how I use Dataset along with um, Jupyter Notebooks to pull in data from all sorts of different sources and turn it into something that I can analyze and work against. Um, I'm going to be hanging around JupyterCon, um, available to answer questions, show people demos, and generally, um, generally help, help people understand why I think this is a tool that's worth adding to your toolbox. Um, so thank you very much for your time.